Hello, hi. Welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravichandran from IIT Kanpur, the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. This is week 7, module 6 and lecture number 42. This is the last lecture of this week and we just have one more week. Now, in this week, uh, I am going to conclude this module uh, about body language and particularly I will be focusing on how it will be relevant for group discussions. Before I start, let me give a brief review of what I did in the previous uh, lecture. In the previous lecture, I focused on body language for interviews. I started with uh, uh, telling you that preparation for uh, body language does not start just a day before. It is a mental, emotional and spiritual preparation and then the preparation is required much before the interview and then you need to remain calm and confident. What do employers generally look for? Employers are clearly looking for soft skills which comprise many body language traits such as appearance, attitude, personality and positive outlook. And it is very important to make that first best impression which very often becomes the last impression also. In order to make that uh, first best impression, one has to keep in mind punctuality, dress, handshake which has to be very firm, body language, all aspects of it including posture and gestures and an overall enthusiasm from the beginning till the end which should come from the facial expressions. I also discussed about some do's and don'ts particularly with regard to dress code, in terms of appearance, in terms of use of accessories. So, I said what you should do and what you should not be doing. Towards the conclusion, I emphasized on certain important aspects of body language such as giving a firm handshake, maintaining good eye contact, appropriate posture, so uh, slight leaning forward but not leaning backward, showing enthusiasm throughout, smiling, radiating confidence remaining calm and collected and at the end of it leaving with a good feeling. Now, when you ask how different uh, this is from uh, say group discussion, the first uh, uh, thing I want to tell you is that body language of interview is similar to the body language of group discussion more or less. So, most of the traits which I said in terms of projecting a very positive and confident personality in terms of interview goes with group discussion also. But there are some uh, subtle differences you need to keep in mind. Let us see what are those differences. The differences basically lie in the uh, fact that here you will be in a group and in an interview you are alone and a group is trying to judge you here you are part of the group. So, you need to have more of group dynamics and then you can be examined by so many people and then from different angles you can be seen in terms of group discussion. Now, before we go to actual body language traits, let us see why group discussion is being used today and especially to uh, select candidates. It is easy way to evaluate and eliminate several candidates simultaneously by using group discussion and also it is time plus cost effective method. So, you can call 5000 people and then from 5000 you can divide them into various groups and then very easily from 20 you can select 2 or 3 candidates and then in one day you can just bring it down just to let us say uh, 500 and then from the 500 you can again uh, very easily get 50 and from the 50 if you want uh, those people to go for interview you can select the best 30 or 25 you want from this lot. So, it is very easy to shortlist uh, in terms of time and cost it is very effective. The most important of all it is the best way to identify a natural leader. 
So, most of the typical group discussions, the ones which are conducted for management interviews for example, sound like a real fish market. People go, uh, sometimes they are very aggressive, they fight with each other, although they are not supposed to do those things and then everybody wants to be heard, so they try to push their points of view. As a result, there is so much of commotion and as if you are in a fish market and so many people talking together and making lot of noise. But in that situation, somebody emerges and then calms all the people down, maybe by his or her personality, charisma, language skills, whatever it is. Body language is playing a very crucial in this person whom everybody is sooner or later acknowledging as a kind of natural leader who is emerging out of this commotion, confusion and disorder. Again, what is group discussion? If it is just to identify the natural leader, how it is done, what are the expected traits? A group interactive selection process which the employers use to gauge certain personality traits of prospective candidates is called group discussion. What are the expected personality traits? Now, you should be observing this. If you look at it, the top 8 traits which I have put are all related to nonverbal communication and soft skills and obviously body language. Only the last 3 which I have put are related to knowledge. Look at the top ones, leadership uh, skills, group management, team working skills, communication skills adaptability and flexibility, positive mental outlook, decent and professional dressing, grooming sense, assertive body language, projection of a distinctively likable personality, reasoning ability, analytical ability, logical and coherent thinking. So, these last three are actually related to knowledge, but the remaining top ones are always related to nonverbal communication, body language and soft skills. What will a group discussion do? Okay. It elicits the views of all participants and evolves a consensus through active and intense interaction. What are the things you should keep in your mind? First of all, it is group discussion, not individual discussion. You are not talking to somebody in a canteen, you are not talking to your friend in uh, a mall, you are not meeting somebody during a walk. Now, these are all interpersonal communication, but this is group. So, you are amidst so many people along with you. So, it is not individual discussion. The second part of it, understand it is discussion, not public speaking or debate or interview. So, in a discussion, you participate you elicit information from others and then you evolve at a consensus, you actively listen and then intense interaction is there. In public speaking, it is a kind of one way traffic, you speak and the audience already give the leadership to you and the audience judges you without competing with uh, the audience, whereas here you compete with the audience who are actually fellow participants. In debate again, there is a moderator, a chairperson who presides over the debate and who gives proper shape and direction to the entire course of action. Again in interview, there is a panel that evaluates the candidate suitability for the concerned job. This is group discussion which is different from all these other activities where you are involved but at an individual level, intrapersonal level but here you are individual who is in a group. So, group dynamics vis-a-vis -vis your own uh, personality traits. So, that becomes crucial. How is the GD structured? The interesting fact about a GD is that it is a totally unstructured activity. In fact, uh, in some GDs, they will also be asked to identify the topic itself and then it is a leaderless group. Uh, very rare cases there are moderators, but then they deliberately do not keep any moderators. Even if there are some facilitators, they just start the GD and then they uh, just 
leave the room, they watch them from hidden camera or they go to a corner, they completely leave them to the group. It is a leaderless group and all the candidates are competitors and then uh, you are expected to join the discussion okay, without the presence and participation of the examiner. So, it could have 10 to 50 candidates and it can be from 15 to 30 minutes. Now, if you ask me to put GD in a nutshell, I will say that GD is all about coordination and cooperation. So, coordination and cooperation. If you remember these two key words and try to mold your body in terms of coordinating and cooperating, you will be the winner. Now, what are the traits you need in terms of coordination? Basically, leadership qualities. The good leader is a good coordinator, a good follower also. Management skills, a good leader is also a good manager, which involves planning. You should keep in mind the time of the GD. You should tell them about the procedure in which you can uh, conduct the GD. You should show conflict resolution skills and overall you should be able to harmonize if you are interested in becoming the coordinator of the GD. The other part of GD is all about cooperation. This is teamwork, working together towards a shared aim. So, you have a common objective, collective goal and you have to work together. Now, the very funny part of uh, this thing is you need to do the things that you hate to do and you have to do that with a smile. That means, you need to talk to somebody whom you do not like to talk to. You may hate this person. Okay. By the look of the person itself, your body language is uh, uh, becoming rigid and then inside your uh, emotion is becoming very distressed and then anguished and then you do not like something in this person. Maybe the person is too aggressive, too dominating, too condescending and you are not like that and then you feel uh, somewhat bad about it. But you have to work with this person that is cooperation. So, cooperation is defined as doing the things that you hate to do, but you need to do that with a smile. So, you do not like this person, you hate the person, but then while talking you say, as my friend said, oh friend I agree with you, oh, my dear uh, fellow participant. Inside you may be hating, but when you have to cooperate, you cannot show your emotion, you need to control it. Now, what are the basic components of a GD? So, there are four basic components. So, as I had hinted it before, the first component is related to leadership, which involves initiative, decision making, planning and having a vision. The second component is about knowledge, one has to be thorough in the subject, uh, particularly with regard to current affairs and technical advancements. Now, in this G, uh, this part of uh, the GD, we are not focusing more on the knowledge part, but we are focusing more on the body language part. Again, if you look at it, of the four basic components except knowledge, the third one communication skills, which involves active listening, fluency, clarity, coherence, diction, enunciation, effectiveness and fourth one personality manifestation involves soft skills, body language, positive outlook, pleasing mannerism are all to do with soft skills, communication skills and body language. How will you be evaluated? Again here also if you see 75 percent of the marks are actually given to things which are not related to knowledge. Knowledge gets one fourth of uh, credit. So, personality out of 25 marks, uh, roughly they would give around 5 marks for dress appearance, another 5 for temperament, tone and voice, yet another 5 for gesture, body language and another 5 for mental state okay. and then 5 for overall impression. Knowledge again it is divided 5 each, depth range, logical thinking, organization of ideas, overall impression, but communication skills, active listening, fluency diction, enunciation, overall impression, leadership, initiative, team spirit, endurance, conflict resolution skills, decision making and then overall impression. 
Now, while evaluating, they also look for some positive traits as well as some neg negative traits. Let us look at what are the positive traits. As I said, most of the things they talk in terms of personality are closely related to body language. The first one they look for is enthusiasm, okay. and then keenness and curiosity, participation, cheerfulness, smartness. So, knowledge it is the same what I discussed before. In terms of communication skills, positive traits, they look for clarity, felicity of expression, categorical conclusion, coherence of ideas and overall effectiveness. In terms of leadership, it is like uh, the same that I discussed before, except team spirit and then patience is also added generally as a positive trait. The negative traits, again personality, please pay uh, complete attention to this because uh, body language will be revealed in terms of your personality. Introversion and slowness, that is if you keep your thoughts to yourself and if you are very slow to respond, that is a negative one lack of confidence. So, uh, there are 10 people and then everybody speaks and then your turn comes. So, they are asking would you like to speak, you take the mic, oh, uh, no I, 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 I think I will I'll talk later, I, I would let it pass. So, uh, uh, I, I would rather think about it later. Now, you lose your chance, you also exhibit a very poor self image of you, you lack in confidence. Apprehensive. So, all the time being afraid of somebody, somebody will do something to you, tenseness, so stressed and impoliteness using rude words. So, that is also part of your soft skills, using polite expressions are very important. Apathy that is complete uh, absence of any feeling, unresponsiveness and also boredom. So, you sit and then show that you are very bored and then you just listen to other people as if you have no interest. Now, knowledge, lack of subject knowledge, lack of meticulousness, poor quality of mind, lack of creative ideas, lack of analytical thinking, all will contribute to negative traits. In terms of communication skills, fumbling, muteness, confused and unclear, meandering, that is uh, keep on diverting and not coming to the main point, incoherence, there is no proper coherence in the thought, in the way one person is speaking monotony, same way, same ideas are expressed repeated again and again. Leadership, negative traits, isolated, insulated, that is he keeps aloof, protects himself and behaves as if uh, the person is unapproachable, very egoistic and aggressive, weak and wavering and often the person is impatient. Now, the best possible attitude you should have in GD is this that you should think you are right okay? and then you should show appreciation if somebody is right, but I am not wrong. So, prove till the end of the GD that categorically you are not wrong and overall try to promote a win-win situation and that will uh, see you through in the GD and get you the desired success. What are some most common body language pitfalls? If you are anxious to talk too much and then if you are nervous and then you talk too little, you show aggressive behavior and then arrogant gestures, distractive body language, what is distractive body language like uh, uh, playing with the button, playing with pen, so sometimes uh, opening the pen and then closing it, looking at the pen, playing with the watch, playing with the ring playing with the uh, earring, no speaking okay, and so on like all negative gestures which makes other people look at you. So, they become distractive body language, indifference, so as if you are not a participant and then spectator behavior, you just sit and watch what other people do, you do not participate, fidgeting, so showing nervousness, smelling bad, uh, maybe you just took some garlic fried rice, you did not wash your mouth, you smoked, you did not wash your mouth, you took some beer, you did not wash your mouth. So, that smell, pungent smell, so will make people immediately feel annoyed and irritated with you. Some more practical tips in terms of body language, which has been said already, but 
uh, I would like to particularly emphasize in terms of uh, GD also, maintain eye contact throughout the GD. So, even if you are not addressing somebody, so keep looking at the people around you and when you are talking, again you try to vary the eye contact and then try to address the entire group. Do not focus on one particular person, especially the person who tends to agree with you or the person whom you like. Okay. So, try to even look at the person whom you think you do not like and who is likely to be your opponent, but then looking at the person will also try to help you to maintain a kind of rapport. Avoid distractive and negative body language, more in terms of biting nails, shaking legs or shaking hand. Shaking legs is really a very distractive uh, gesture. Picking nose, playing with pen I already told you. Do not lean back in chair with hands clasped behind head which shows that you are arrogant or you are disinterested and it will also show that you are very aggressive. You should not be aggressive, you should be assertive. And then uh, they can also give you chairs with wheels. So, do not try to move uh, back and forth, move sideways, hit somebody's chair, play with the chair. The ch if the chair can also rotate, so do not just try to move here and there, keep rotating it. So, these are all distractive behavior and shows a very immature and unprofessional attitude in you. Overall, what aspects of body language you should be exhibiting in group discussions? Posture, even while going and sitting, walk upright as, as it was said before, stand tall and then even sit tall. Before sitting, give firm handshake or if uh, there are uh, females and then they are shy to give a handshake, you can just say namaste and uh, try to control any kind of uh, negative trait such as showing aggressive behavior, getting provoked so easily. Do not get angry at all in the GD, although if somebody is giving a very provocative statement, lean slightly forward to show interest and empathy, use open palm gestures. So, do not put it inside your pocket, do not put it on the back. So, do not try to hide it if you have a coat or something, use open palm gestures. And if you have a file or handbag, do not try to hide. So, you put it here and then you try to hide, okay, do not do that. So, be open and nod your head to show agreement and sometimes even you can nod, gently smile even to show appreciation. By showing that you are able to appreciate somebody even if you have not made a point, it shows another important trait in your leadership quality that you do not feel insecure if somebody is making a good point. And then give that radiating smile, so it comes with lot of energy. It is uh, nice to look at you when you give that radiating smile. Be cheerful throughout even if somebody is insulting you, do not take it to heart. So, this is a GD and you have come here to express your views. Okay. More light should come even if there is a fight and you should minimize the fight. Before GD as well as after the GD, monitor your performance using feedback from friends or from your own video recording. So, you even when it is happening, if you could arrange for a video recording of your performance, review that and try to have mock performances. Look for negative behavior particularly and try to minimize it and ask people, your friends in the group as what they liked in you when you were uh, giving the talk presentation in the GD and try to enhance those traits, the likable ones. And the next advice I would give you is do not wait to change your personality once you get a particular job. So, do not think that if I get that job and then when I try for the next job, I will improve my soft skills and personality, I will become a very good participant in GD. Right now I am shy, right now I am introverted, right now I do not want to develop. If I do that, if I get that job, I will definitely do that. But assume the personality even before. When you assume that personality, you will automatically get that desired job or even a better job. But thinking that after getting the job, you will change, develop your personality is not going to help. Become the person even before you get the job. 
behave as if you are in the position even if uh, before you are promoted to that position and overall go with the winning attitude okay so that's very important so when you go with a winning attitude like psyching up your mind and thinking that you are going to get it so there will be cheerfulness on your face you will be calm and collected the entire body will uh, exhibit that you are not somebody who is going to be afraid or who is going to be suppressed by somebody you will emerge as the natural leader and it will be very difficult to reject you in gd alone okay now having said this even if you go with a winning attitude sometimes there are some people who have developed qualities better than you maybe they had better awareness than you so sometimes they appear to dominate you they appear to get things done faster than you maybe they got selected in the gd but remember this don't become disheartened remember this this is my uh, concluding note for you the aim of argument or of discussion should not be victory but progress so you should not think that oh i lost and somebody won no the entire aim of the discussion was progress progress in terms of thought progress in terms of gaining new experience progress in terms of your own personality development each gd that you attend gives you a kind of peak experience each interview that attend it's also going to give you a completely different experience which you don't get it otherwise the kind of stress that is built up the uh, you stress the positive stress and the relief that you have after that takes you to another level okay if only you learn from some minor mistakes that you might have committed by watching your own video by participating again and again in more gds using the tips i have given particularly focusing on your body language aspect very keenly very closely definitely you will make progress okay with this note we are concluding this week and we just have one more week and then that will be the last concluding week this uh, uh, the next lecture that will be in the coming week i am just going to start with presentation skills as many of you wanted to know how you can do in presentation skills that will be the next one but as of uh, today i wish you once again success in all the gds that you are going to participate wish you all the best and thank you so much for watching this video